Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Okay! Hi, I'm Rick Alvarez, standing here in the world-famous Frame and Picture Shop in Massachusetts. You can reach us at frame it at frame and picture shop.com shop is s h o p p e or you can call us at 413-599-1854 stop into the store we're in western mass we frame everything including comic books such as this beautiful g2 number one expertly framed by me so welcome back to cut the tape we are going to cut some stuff open today I'm pretty excited because I am excited about the character selection today. First, we have Sludge. Speaking of Sludge, a lot of people wondering where did Slug come from? All right, I'm going to give you the lowdown on where the name Slug come from came from. So we couldn't use the name Slag anymore because in some parts of the world that has a negative connotation. Uh, I didn't know that for many years until somebody explained it to me. When I think of slag, I think of a pile of melted metal. But we couldn't use the name slag anymore. So I was trying to think of a nest name. This was for Fall of Cybertron. It's when we first used that name. All the Dinobots start with S. Sludge, slag, swoop, snarl. And Slag became Slug. And I thought Slug, like a uh, slug that you put in your gun. And that's where that name came from. And it kind of stuck. So, but we have Sludge today. Sludge. I'm not super crazy about Transformers, Bumblebee, Cyberverse, Transmutate, Cybertron Adventures, Dinobot Island toy line, Energon, Armor, Fight the Allspark, Dinobots, Unite, Cybercon, toy line. The show's okay. It's, um, toy lines, unique, and it's, it's grown to be its own thing, and watching how it evolved from the first few toys, which are, uh, yeah, to what it is now, and... All toy lines have those growing pains. You think about the first few toys that came out in Beast Wars and how that line changed, not by Transmetals, but by the organic beast towards the end of the season one phase before you get into Transmetals. You think about those deluxes that had the armor up head and how the line changed. Well, same thing can be said about Beast Machines. Same thing could be said about Masterpiece. Ooh, that's a good one. Remember Masterpiece MP01 versus MP44? Night and day. Night and day. It's like, what? Almost 20 years apart? Maybe? So, anyway, let's get it open. I'm never a fan of open package toys because someone can pull a LeBron James. What I mean by that, you go to the store and there's a LeBron James Space Jam figure from a movie that nobody wanted. And now it's a toy line that nobody wants and people come over and they just pop the head off. It's become trendy. It's become an internet meme. And that's so harmful. It's so wasteful to do that. Don't, don't steal figures and heads off of figures because you think that's funny. That's why I don't like these open packages. These open packages serve a few purposes. One, it allows tactile contact, makes the kid, ideally, if they touch it, they can play with it a little bit. 
makes them want them more. That's the thinking behind it. It also saves money because you're putting it in less packaging. But at what cost? At what cost, LeBron? At what cost? All right. So we've got a few pieces here. We've got the alt mode tail and head. We got the instructions. I mean, it's Cyberverse, right? How hard can it be? I mean, it's fairly G1-esque. I mean, looking at it, it's like straight up a G1 transformer. All right? Let's see, we got, oh, the tail is a spear. It's just nice that we're getting a toy line that's got all the Dinobots in it and not just like Grimlock. It's like doing a War for Cybertron line and only making one Insecticon. Who would do that? Anyway, Cyberverse, let's transform it. I don't like to transform things on the show, but it's Cyberverse. How hard can it be? All right, it's not supposed to be hard. Oh, it's a little 2G1 because I misassembled it. But that's the good thing about toys nowadays. They can come apart and snap back together without it being damaged. We didn't have that in the 80s. When something snapped off, you were out of luck. All right. Yep. It's very G1 in its transformation sequence. And this ball joints are loose. So if your ball joints are loose, take some nail polish, clear nail polish, apply it to the ball joint, and that should thicken up the ball joint a little bit more so it adds a little more friction to your figure. Okay, there we go. Yay, dinosaur, it's sludge, yay. Yay for Sludge, we're gonna put him right up here. Put him right up there. Yay. Sludge. Gonna recycle this. File this. All right. Woo! Let's move on to Trax. Trax is such an interesting figure because he's a triple changer, but he's not advertised. At least not originally as a triple changer. On the back of the box, all it does is show three modes. I mean, I guess you can understand that's a flight mode. It's got wings, right? But he was never really advertised or pushed as a triple changer. We had... Well, I mean, he was a very different triple changer because Astrotrain and Blitzwing had dedicated alt modes, flight and ground. This is just the wings pop out of the back of the Corvette. Remember to check the back for weapons hiding. Sneaky, sneaky. So yeah, he's a triple changer. Maybe he's not a triple changer. Maybe it's just Just like a flight mode. It's not a full on triple changer. That's, so that's what we need. That's what we need. We need a Trax figure that turns from a Corvette. We're going full octane here. He transforms from a Corvette to a uh, Concorde. That's, that's what we need. And there's a trading card. In the back, it's Megatron, Galvatron underneath. Cool, cool, cool. Recycle. Recycle. 
Recycling is important. Man, I gotta I say, uh, you know, Chug was great. Generations, as some of us older fans call it. It was a great line. And we got a lot of updates. But now we're living in an age where we're getting animation style updates. We're getting updates to characters to look like animation in a TV show that doesn't air anywhere and you can only get it on DVD. I mean, yeah, you can look at it on Netflix or YouTube. I don't think, no, G1's not on Netflix, it's on YouTube. But how else do kids know this, right? There's no bio on the back. There's nothing that says, hey, he's flying. It's a fly, it's a Corvette that has a flight mode. It doesn't say that. Okay. I think that's, that's a better look. Very loosey goosey. Very loosey goosey, hard to stand up. Mm. I remember I got tracks as a kid and I opened him. We were at a shopping mall. My mom got him for me and I opened him right at the shopping mall. <laughs> I remember playing, we sat down at like um, some place to eat a snack or something and I was playing with tracks. And I still have that figure. I still have that tracks. And I kept opening the little the little door. That's what this is missing. I'm missing the little door to flip open to put the little diaclone driver. And I'm like, I wonder what goes in there. <gasps> There's got to be something that goes in there. I didn't know. I didn't know back then. I didn't know. I do want to transform this though. I still subscribe to the first transformation should be without instructions. Just see how it goes. See where you end up. Yeah, that's a pretty good transformation. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I don't know where this foot goes. I mean, I see how this works, but I don't see where this foot goes. Man. His foot has to hide somebody somewhere. It's got to go like up the crotch or something. Oh, I see. See, I was flipping it the wrong way. No, nope, I don't know. I don't know. There it is. Doesn't snap together quite quite right. But yeah, I mean, see if it does the roll test. It rolls! Great! Woo! Awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome. Alright. The moment we've all been waiting for. Ravaji. I waited 20 years to get this figure. I remember the year was either 97 or 98 I was a senior in high school Cartoon Network aired the last five episodes of season two of Beast Wars and I missed the first one on Monday and then the next four episodes I'm like where's Dinobot where's Dino what happened to Dinobot did they kill him did I miss that episode where they killed Dinobot 
I missed it. But then he shows up. What an incredible moment when Ravage shows up, transforms into the tape deck, which is what we see here. What an incredible moment. You know, looking at this, he's got the Predacon symbol and the Decepticon symbol. In the show, he's got the Decepticon symbol and the Predacon symbol. The toy just has the Predacon symbol, which is, that is lame. You gotta have both symbols on there. Let me tell you why. Because my tattoos are based off this figure, off the cartoon version of this. So I have the Decepticon symbol here, and I have the Predacon symbol here, based off Ravage. Because I love Beast Wars. 20 years I've been waiting to get this figure. So pretty genius that um, obviously you can't have this figure turn into a tape. I mean, you could. But then it would just be a big tape. What are you going to do with that? It's not exciting. It's not sexy. It's not fun. This guy obviously turns into a Jaguar. But he comes with his G1 version as well. So it's got a G1 reissue in here as well. Awesome instruction booklet. I mean, that head, that's pretty darn close to the show head. Now, at the time in the 90s, there was a Ravage figure which came out in Japan and it was a heavily remolded transmetal Cheetor figure. That figure was only released once in the US as Transmetal Tagatron at BotCon. BotCon 2001. And then that mold disappeared. We were never able to find it again, which is why that figure never came out again. Oh, the mouth opens and shuts. It's just missing that Decepticon symbol. It's got the Predacon symbol. It's missing the Decepticon symbol. It needs a purple. This is like a crimson Predacon symbol. Matches this. It needs a purple Decepticon symbol to match this. Oh my God, I love it. I absolutely love it. Ooh, he's got some show accurate guns right here. Oh, I love it. And he had kind of like a Eastern European, Russian, Slavic accent in the show, which I found a little weird. But hey whatever we got ravage again oh look it's fucking ravage oh man exciting and as a bonus a g1 ravage reissue you know isn't it crazy that and this this makes a great display for them we're going to keep this. Great display. Isn't it crazy that 40 years later, these figures are still being reissued? Crazy. Absolutely crazy. That's how good they were. That's, that's the staying power of these figures. It's got really nice decos on it, or tampos. They're not stickers anymore. Still die cast. Man. Nothing like a fresh G1 figure. The Ravage 2-pack. 
It's got a great little display. I'm gonna display this dude right here. So this little Hello Kitty figure. This little dog there. That's right, Ravage is a dog. Mm -hmm. Just trust me, because I'm a scientist. Well, <clears throat> speaking of science, that was fun. I feel like, you know, every time you open a G1 toy, I feel like I accomplished something. I feel like I did something good. Like, I feel better. Let's transform him real quick. Beautiful. I love it. I love it. Great. Couldn't be happier with it. Oh, man. Hey, listen. I'm vaccinated. I got my booster. You should get your booster. And um, be nice to each other. Wear a mask where appropriate. Get your shot. Get your kids their shots. It's important. That way we can move past this one day. Be kind to each other and remember, always find time to cut the tape.